Okay, welcome back. I'm here with uh, Pastor Halid, and thank you again for joining us and uh, telling us this incredible testimony of what happened in Egypt. And we were just now going from the 80s into the 90s, and this fourth wave of the prayer movement and what happened. Uh, and I understand it was marked by what had happened in Uganda, actually. Yes, and um, just to m mention this story about the pastor who was threatened to be put in prison. This ignited, ignited the prayer for years in this church and other churches mm. to pray for his protection and safety. Mm. And, and this was actually a turning point on the map. Yep. We felt that prayer, prayers make things happen. Mm. And, and, and we should believe that till now that right. it opened doors. It, when we asked God for protection, it happened. Yes. And he answered, uh, he answers he answered prayers. Prayer. He does, yeah. So this is what happened with the fourth wave with Pastor Minis Abdul Noor mm. and his protection. And he was never been in jail, just even for one night. Because of the, awesome. and we believe that this was because of the prayer. Because he, he was putting his bag and his, right. he was ready. And I understood he told his board, I'm, oh, I'm yeah. going to leave, I'm resigning. He, he, he said that, and, and, and he got some letters, threatening letters and yes. emails that we will burn down your church. Ah. We will burn it down. And he said, I can't take this responsibility. So he, he gathered the board mm. of elders, and he said, I'm resigning. And the board said, they will burn it down, and we will rebuild it, build it again. I love that. And this was a sign of God's hand mm. that, that God is about to do something. And here comes the fourth wave. The first wave was with the Korean church. We yes. had this experience. The fourth wave with the Ugandan church. We, we, we got to know at that time to hear and to know Pastor Molendi and Pastor Michael Kimoli, yep. and we invited them to come to Egypt for prayer conferences, teaching, and seminars, workshops, okay. and so many things. And, and this was in the 90s. Yeah, yeah, it was in the 90s, and it started actually before Pastor Molendi and Kimoli. We felt that the prayer movement is going down mm. a plateau. Plateau. Plateau uh, stage. Yep. It was less growth. Yeah, it, it was okay. It was just running prayer meetings, yep. running prayer conferences. Right. But it wasn't like it didn't have this fire. Mm -hmm. So when we when we invited Pastor Melondi and Kimoli, the fire came back, and actually, we were struggling to keep the prayer meetings even in our church. But when they came to our country, mm. we felt that, that this was God sent people mm. to our land and to our nation uh, for, for a new uh, revival. Literally, it was a revival mm. of the prayer movement in Egypt at that time. And it was, it was, it, it went beyond the, the boundaries of a local church. It was really a wave, an overwhelming wave to so many churches. Did it mark a beginning of a unity movement across the churches and across the leaders? Yes, yes. But in the fifth wave that we will come to it yes. soon, we will talk about the unity in, okay. in, a, in a beautiful way. Okay. But this, yes, we, we started to taste mm. that, to smell it. Yes. But, but uh, yeah, it revived the, the prayer movement everywhere, and not just with the young people, right. with everybody, uh, the ages and some of the denominations and so forth. Mm. Yeah. Very good. So talk about the fifth wave. Okay. The fifth wave, this one was made in Egypt as a continuation, of course, of the fourth wave, which is the Ugandan influence. Transformational wave, yeah. But this wave, it, it was the local leaders and the pastors, not all of them, but Great. some of the pastors of the church, 
just just to jump back for one moment back to the prior wave um, uh, you said to me earlier that uh, the decisions of this country are in the hands of the prayer warriors oh, and yeah. the intercessors. So talk about that a little bit, just to go back, because I know yeah. that was so great. Oh, yeah. I just wanted the audience to hear it. Yeah. Uh, what happened that, that Pastor Mulendi and Kimoli, yes. they, they challenged us okay. to pray for the land and to pray for the people and the government and the regime. And they said to us for the first time to hear that. The, 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 the future. Yeah, the future and the keys of the, the decisions keys. of this land won't be with the politicians. The, the, decision would, the decisions would be made in the prayer rooms, with the, in the prayer conferences, in, 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 with the believers, not the, with the politicians. Wow. And we took that seriously and we started to pray. So it was like a wave of faith came on the church. Oh yeah, definitely. And we started to pray for yeah. education. For the education in Egypt, we started to pray for the economy. Yep. We started to pray for the media. Everything. Big things. Everything outside mm. the walls of the church. Yes. And we felt that we are, we have the future in our hands. Yes. We have to mold. Yes. We have to mold. You're almost legislating things through prayer. Exactly. Exactly. Even we were envisioning changes in the government, in the, the okay. process of the decision making with the politic, yep. political arena to be started here in prayers. Right. This was, was happened with, 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 with the Ugandan influence. influence. The, the fifth wave, which is the last, now, and, and they are reaping and enjoying the fruit and the fruits of them, is that the, the prayer movement now it's not just about the charismatic. Mm. It's not just about the evangelical. Mm. It's cross the denominations. Mm -hmm. So now, Working together. when they call for prayer, it doesn't mean the local church, even the largest church. Mm. It's not about an evangelical or a denomination or whatever. We're talking about the people of the land. Mm. So everybody come, and now they are experiencing the unity between the denominations. The unity, we can argue, we can argue about theology. Mm. We can argue about who's right and who's wrong about the, the, the second coming of, uh, of sure. Jesus Christ or whatever. But when we, come, when we come on our knees, now we don't argue, we, we are united. Yes just seeking the presence of the Lord and the face of God of the land. So now, the, the, the prayer conferences totally changed wow. than before. You see priests coming okay. from the Orthodox Church. From the Coptic Orthodox Church. You, you see priests coming from the Catholic Church, and okay, you see wow. pastors coming from the Evangelical. Of course, we have this ecumenical movement or yes. ecumenical protocol uh, meetings sure. that we saw so this archbishop coming yep. to meet with the other archbishop yep. coming to meet with the archpastor <laughs> <laughs> and this was just a protocol and we're saying we're playing nice we're right. playing nice playing nice is not unity yes. but when we pray together uh, we are just melting together in just one pot. The most important thing. This is, this is different. And this is making a big difference. And the people, mm. our congregations now, when they see the leaders and we, when they pray together with this cross-denominational prayers, yes. it's making a big difference. Now, the government, they believe that these people, we cannot ignore them right. anymore. Right. We cannot ignore them. So the, the power of prayer now is really becoming manifest and magnified, and it's the unity, like Jesus prayed in John 17, exactly. that was firing this thing. And this really led right into 2011, which was the uh, stepping down of uh, President Mubarak, which we'll get to in our next segment. So let's now take time to pray about unity, uh, not only unity in Egypt and the story you just relayed, but unity here in New England and the United States, and uh, let's, let's just draw upon what Jesus said in John 17. 
So, Father, we just thank you for uh, your son uh, coming to die for us. And, Lord, we just lift uh, his prayer as our prayer up to you, which would, would, would be that we would become one across these lines and barriers. We would become uh, one on the earth uh, here as believers, uh, no matter what the obstacles are. Even coming around in prayer, because prayer changes things, and prayer is so important that we would come together as one as you are one. And even as a result of this, other people will know. They will know. And we're about to hear this great story finish and know that you, uh, they know uh, that this is the truth, that this is powerful, that this changes things. And you are a God who sees all things. You are the God who will change uh, environments and even countries that seem impossible to change. So we thank you for Lord, forgive me for being so tied, chained to my office, to my desk, and to my books. Forgive me for being encapsulated in this local church minded and give me, give me the kingdom mentality and kingdom mindset and to build bridges and to go the extra mile with other churches and for other churches as well to be um, an answer and a fulfillment of your prayers in John 17. In your name, amen. Amen. So please pray for the unity in the church worldwide, but here specifically in the U.S. along those uh, great prayers of John 17 that Jesus prayed. We'll see you in the next second. Thank you.